Jerry 501. I'm in the U.S. Senate Committee on Environment and Public Works. This is a press release dated May 28, 2013 by Senator Barbara Boxer. Senator Barbara Boxer, Chairman of the Environment and Public Works Committee, today revealed that correspondence between Southern California Edison and Mitsubishi Heavy Industries presents major new evidence of misrepresentation and safety lapses by Edison. Senator plans to provide this correspondence to federal and state officials, including the U.S. Department of Justice, so they can determine whether Edison engaged in willful wrongdoing. Senator Boxer said, and I quote, this correspondence leads me to believe that Edison intentionally misled the public and regulators in order to avoid a full safety review and public hearing in connection with its redesign of the plant. The correspondence shows that Edison knew they were not proceeding with a simple like-for-like -like replacement, as they later claimed. In Edison's own words, this will be one of the largest steam generators ever built. It will require Mitsubishi Heavy Industries to evolve a new design beyond that which they currently have available. They aren't like-for-like -like replacements. Ultimately, Edison asserted that the replacement was like-for-like, -like, enabling them to avoid a full license review and a public hearing. The other shocking information I have learned from this correspondence is that Edison said if there were to be a failure of the steam generators due to tube wear and the need for tube plugging, this would be a disastrous outcome. Now that this precise failure has occurred and there has been a leak of radioactive material, Edison claims that it could simply restart the nuclear plant at 70% capacity and once again circumvent the full safety and licensing process. How could they first assert that tube failure would be a disastrous outcome and now they claim that it is no big deal? Given this new information, it is clear to me that in order for this nuclear plant to even be considered for a restart in the future, all investigations must be completed and a full license amendment and public hearing process must be required. This is simply a common sense approach. So I would like to thank Barbara Boxer for doing what the NRC refuses to do. This is the letter in which she was quoting from, dated November 30th, 2004, from Southern California Edison Vice President Dwight E. Nun, Noon, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce his name letter was written to Mr. Akira Sawa, General Manager at Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. Since I was unable to participate in the replacement steam generator contract signing in September due to emergent problems at our facility, I don't even need to go any further with that. That's frightening. Uh, I will leave links to both of these and you can come in and read in great detail the concerns uh, regarding this re regarding the implementation and the building of the new steam generator for San Onofre nuclear generating station. Will require Mitsubishi Heavy Industries to evolve a new design beyond that which they currently have available. Notwithstanding this fact, and after working with your organization for almost two months, we have some observations that we'd like to share with you. First bullet point is, is a detailed and accurate calculation of Reactor coolant system flow is critical to ensure the steam generators are designed to within limits required to satisfy our existing licensing basis 
of 106% of the original flow rate. Failure to meet this requirement would have significant impact on the operation of San Onofre, including a potential inability to operate the units. The anti-vibration bar design is by far one of the most challenging tasks that they will face and in fact it is in our opinion it is the single most significant task facing the industry for steam generators of our size today. Um, it is paramount concern of ours that we ensure a reliable support design. We consider this engineering challenge perhaps the most critical issue. Recent industry experiences with anti-vibration bar supports have demonstrated the difficulty in developing a successful design. The recent experience at a United States plant emphasized this point when more than 180 tubes were found to have wear indications after only one cycle of operations. Some of these indications were up to 20% through the wall. Our discussions with Mitsubishi Heavy Industries to date have not resulted in a plan that will successfully address this industry concern. Okay, next one is San Onofre's location, being that it's right on the Pacific Ocean and in a high seismic zone. As part of the seismic design effort, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries developing a stick mass spring model for the new steam generators. However, these models aren't ready for use at this time and the design effort must proceed to meet the 2008 delivery date for the steam generators for Unit 2. Consequently, the design of the new steam generators is currently proceeding using the existing steam generator seismic response based on a like-for-like -like replacement concept. Although the old and new steam generators will be similar in many respects, they aren't like-for-like -like replacements. Should there be a significant difference in the seismic response of the old and new steam generators, changes in the steam generator design may be necessary. Therefore, it is imperative that adequate margin be provided in the replacement steam generator design to accommodate this possibility while simultaneously expediting the necessary new analysis. Procurement of major components is currently in progress and purchase of new forging can't be accommodated in the schedule should it become necessary. San Onofre Steam Generator Moisture Separator Assembly will be the largest Mitsubishi Heavy Industries has ever designed. Based on these observations, I am concerned that there is the potential that design flaws could be inadvertently introduced into the steam generator design that will lead to unacceptable consequences like tube wear and eventual tube plugging. This would be a disastrous outcome for both of us and a result each of our companies desires to avo avoid. In evaluating this concern, it would appear that one way to avoid this outcome is to ensure the relevant experience in designing larger size steam generators will be utilized. It is my understanding the Mitsubishi Heavy Industries is considering the use of Westinghouse in several areas related to scaling up your current steam generator design, as noted above. I applaud your effort in this regard and endorse your attempt to draw upon the expertise of other individuals and companies to improve the likelihood of a successful outcome for this project. As always, God bless.